All right, beautiful day here in Princeton Harbor. I'm gonna be working on an 11 by 14 inch panel today. I'm just gonna to try to paint quickly, have fun, no judgment, uh, lay it on thick and see what happens. Let me show you what I'm thinking. The things I'm most attracted to are the cypress trees and the reflection in the water and then the light on the buildings. So I'm gonna to try to compose in a way that accentuates those features. Okay, so I'm gonna go with the water line on the lower third and as i mentioned i just want to play around with shapes here it's kind of a complicated scene um with these trees and buildings the buildings are in here and then there's some smaller buildings in the distance the land goes out like this uh, these are rocks in the foreground like right here these are rocks and then there's some grass I want to make sure that I have irregular spacing of the tree trunks. All right, I think I'm going to have this distant hill go up a little bit. And there are some trees on the distant hill. If I kept it straight across, it might seem out of balance. I don't want to get too complicated with these trees. I want the foliage to be all one united shape. An interesting shape, hopefully. Lately, I've been thinking that I'd rather do a bad painting than a boring painting. So today's goal is to make sure this painting is not boring. It can be bad. I'm okay with that. Mixing up a dark purple here using ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. And I'm using a number eight natural bristle flat. I'm going to try to use this brush for the whole painting. As usual, starting with my darkest darks squinting at the trees and just looking for interesting patterns. I'm not worried about exactly replicating the shapes. I'm gonna try to do this painting fairly quickly too. So I don't overthink things. There's a house over here, but I think I might, it's kind of in shadow, which is good because I wanna keep the light on these houses over here. I also want to make sure that these trunks aren't exactly all straight up and down. I want some variety. All right, distant hills are fairly dark. Just estimating colors at this point quickly. All right, saturated green in the foreground. Keeping the colors thin and transparent for now just to get the design onto the panel. Right, and we're using a sort of bluish gray mixture for some of the houses that are behind the trees just getting a general tone established here okay the rocks along the water line are kind of a brownish color and then these rocks are much lighter so got a yellow ochreish mix here and some titanium white all right, using phthalo blue and titanium white for the sky. And I'm leaving a little bit of space around the trees so that I can come back in and darken them up and not have the sky and those dark colors blend. I don't mind if they blend uh, later in the process, but early on, I do want to keep my colors clean. All right, the water in the distance is almost a grayish green. And then it gets closer to yellow or kind of brownish in this area. So I'll warm it up uh, in the foreground here. That is a little dark, that's all right. I can always lighten it up by putting sky reflections on top. All right, buildings in the distance. Just gonna put in the shadows on those buildings first. And there's some in the trees here too. All right, there's the basic design. At this point, um, I walk back from the panel and just decide if there's anything I want to do regarding the shapes, if I want to re rearrange the shapes at all. Maybe I'll have this shape come up like that. All right, the darkest darks are these tree trunks for sure, or the shadow side of the tree trunks anyway and it's a challenge with this brush <laughs> painting uh, these branches but i can come back in and use the sky 
to carve out the shapes. All right, these trunks over here have less light on them. Even though I'm going in thicker, I'm trying to maintain transparency. I don't want the trees to feel too heavy because then I'll have to counterbalance it with something over to the left or it just could feel kind of lopsided. I also want to leave little bits of the burnt sienna sketch showing through if possible. All right, I lost the sky right in here, but I can put that back in. That's not a problem. All right, I'm putting in some of the sky holes and I'm making the sky holes a little bit darker than the surrounding sky. And the reason I'm doing that is there's something called refraction, I think, which is where the light is reduced when it's going through an opening. And the smaller the opening, the more light is reduced, so the darker the sky gets. I hope I explained that well. If the sky holes are too light in value, then they look pasted on. If they're the right value, then they do look like, you know, like you're actually looking through the branches. Okay, so these are too dark, but I will be lightening them up. It's nice to go too dark and then add uh, light on top. All right, I'm adding some light onto the front of these trees here. I'm not staying true to the colors that I'm seeing because the colors are kind of gray. And as I mentioned, I want to have this painting have some vitality and I don't want it to be boring. So adding some color is a nice way to do that. It's also a nice way to create a feeling of light. And by using this big brush, I'm getting some interesting textures going on here. And these trees here, maybe a little bit of light suggested. All right, and there's some shadow shapes under the trees. A lot of times it's the shadows under the trees that make them look like they're rooted to the ground. All right, at the top of the trees, I am seeing some red tones. I'm gonna add those in. Okay. And the wind is starting to pick up out here. Maybe I'll even have some bits of saturated red in here. All right, so I've loaded up the brush and I am looking for uh, bits of green. So I'm going over the top of the darks with a lighter, with a lighter green. So I've got light green going over all these other colors. And I'm not too worried about color harmony problems because I am using a limited palette, so that really does help with harmony. I mean, we'll see, because I'm kind of pushing it a little bit here just for fun. Yeah, so we'll see if I have color harmony issues, but I'm not that worried about it. All right, and I'm trying to mix up a lot of paint here so that I can paint thick. I used to think I used a lot of paint, but I didn't. I think the exercise where I did a palette knife painting showed me that I was not using a lot of paint at all when I thought I was. So I've been trying to remedy that situation. In this area in here, I've mixed in a little phthalo. All right, I just step back and I wanna kind of mess up these shapes a little bit. Actually, I want this to be brighter, so I'm gonna add even more yellow, just thick passages of yellow there. I haven't been using that much liquid on this painting uh, because I'm trying to keep the paint thick. Using a medium like liquid thins out the paint quite a bit. And right, I'm gonna add some warmth to the rocks in the foreground here. Putting some cooler notes in here as well. All right, there is a distant beach out here, leaving some of the burnt sienna. And also, also a suggestion of a beach there as well. I'm not sure how, I might, I might change that. All right, so there are some tree reflections in the water down here. Seeing some orangish colors in these reflections, so I'm gonna exaggerate that color. All right, coming in with some thicker paint for the water. I am gonna add bits of variety in the color of the water, because I'm seeing some bits of purple out there and green. 
gets warmer as it comes closer to the shore. I want to leave some of the yellow coming through, adding some sky reflections. And I'm going to add some out here as well, lighten up the water a little bit. Okay, I'm feeling like these reflections are a little too, a little bit too dark. I'm really pushing the saturation on these. All right, so these distant hills are more of a reddish color. So I'm going to adjust that. And that reddish color will sort of push them into the distance as well. There are little areas of light which I can add back, but it's sort of darker over to the left. And, and then there's a dark patch in here as well that kind of carves out the shape of this building and also maybe this building too. I don't want the white water to be so light that it draws attention away from the houses, which is what the houses are what I want to be the brightest. All right, so here is the finished product. This painting took longer than it should have. It took about two and a half hours to paint. And the problem was this area right here. This is just a bunch of small shapes. Um, so it probably would have been better to do this on a larger panel, like say a 16 by 20. But overall, I am happy with the way it turned out. I like the composition. There are a few things I'd change. These trees were all in a straight line. Um, I did shift it up a little bit, but I think I would raise the base of this tree just a tiny bit. I do like the color harmony and uh, in the subject matter. So I'd like to actually go back and do this composition on a larger panel. So the size of the panel in relation to the complexity of the subject matter is something I've been thinking a lot about lately. Um, if I'm gonna do an 11 by 14, I want the shapes to be fairly simple and uh, you know, not a lot of tiny shapes. And if there are a lot of small shapes like spaces between trees or like say behind a fence or something like that where there's, or another thing is like say the masts of um, boats. Like I've done some harbor paintings and it just, it's just very difficult to do complicated scenes like that on a smaller uh, panel. So that's something I'm trying to be better about is is uh, thinking about, like I said, the complexity of the scene in relation to the size of the panel. So more complex, larger panel, less complex, smaller. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. It's the Patreon support that helps keep me making these videos. It's much appreciated. Uh, and like I said, there's extra videos and uh, materials list, so check it out. Other than that, stay creative, and I'll see you guys in the next video.